The Mundari, like other Nilotic tribes, are very cattle oriented. Cattle serves as food, a form of currency, and a mark of status. They live in symbiosis with their cattle, and nothing is more important for them than their cows. Offer money to a Mundari man, and he will tell you to bring a cow instead. Mundari men have this odd yet interesting culture where they bath their hair in cow urine, giving it a yellow orange color. This is a must watch. Stay tuned. The Mundari tribe is a small ethnic group from the Republic of South Sudan, numbering between 70,000 and 100,000 people. South Sudan, the world's youngest country, gained independence from the Republic of the Sudan in 2011 after a 21-year civil war. The Mundari are one of the ethnic groups indigenous to the Nile Valley Lilotic. Their main homeland is approximately 75 kilometers north of Juba, the capital of South Sudan. Their lands are bounded on the east by the White Nile, an important source of water for livestock. The Mundari follow a mixture of Christian and animistic beliefs with symbols playing an important role. As for many people in the area, the Mundari culture is transmitted orally in songs, dance, poems and other body expressions that reflect good generosity and other core values. Ritual scarification is an important part of cultural identity. Men must undergo initiation rites where initiates live together in nature and spend three months with a village elder away from the community. The rite of passage to adulthood is completed with these scars cut into the forehead. Friendly and peaceful by nature, the Mundari are nevertheless armed like most tribes in South Sudan. Decades of war have made guns ubiquitous and easy to obtain. That said, the Mundari seem to have no interest in warfare as weapons are used to protect their heads from cattle rustlers. Mundari men take up wrestling as a serious hobby from a very young age. They regularly organize wrestling competitions and the best proponents keep going until they are too old to compete. The Mundari are agro-pastoralists with an economy centered on agriculture and herding livestock. Their famous massive horned and Kole Watusi cattle are considered the kings of the cattle. They are part of the Sangha family of African cattle breeds which originated over 2000 years ago from a combination of the Egyptian longhorn cattle of Africa and Zebu longhorns originally from India. Sangha cattle spread throughout Eastern Africa and many different breeds developed. Some studies suggest that the big horns of the Ankole Watusi are an adaptation to hot climate, facilitating the dispersal of excess body heat. While elders from 38 years old and maternal relatives settle in villages with beautiful huts, the young men and women, teens and children go to cattle camps to tend livestock, moving according to the rhythm of the rainy seasons. This part of South Sudan is extremely vulnerable to drought with low rainfall and high temperatures. Sometimes the herds can number as many as 850 animals and finding enough forage for such large herds in arid areas necessitates constant movement. At the end of the dry season, camps are pitched around the Nile, the only place still sufficiently green to accommodate the appetite of the livestock. In Mundari culture, like for many tribes of the region, cattle play an important role in religion, birth and marriage. They are symbols of wealth and power. Every life event includes a reference to cows, the lives of which can be sometimes deemed more important than those of human beings. A person's position in society is established through the ownership of cattle, the size and shape of horns being the most important features. Traditionally, Ankole Watusi cows are considered sacred with an owner's wealth counted in live animals. Unfortunately, cattle are also the main source of conflict. Clashes seldom arise over common resources such as land, 
but rather over animals and their ownership. Before the Civil War, each Ankole Atusi was worth as much as $500. This was the reference value used to calculate the bride price paid to a woman's family. Following the end of the war, the number of middle-aged men in search of wives dramatically increased. This had a direct impact as it doubled the bride price from an average of 20 cows per bride to 40. This inflation has made the cattle even more precious and has also increased the frequency of lethal cattle raids. In a cattle camp, everyone plays their role. The men lead the cows into fields during the day and regroup them in the camp before sunset. The women clean and prepare food for everyone. The children clean the ground of the camp every morning by collecting the dung and burning it at sunset. Ashes are then used as natural antiseptic to protect the skin of the people and cows from insects and the sun. The Mundari also use ash as talcum to massage their cattle twice a day and as toothpaste for themselves. Cattle urine is used to wash hands, faces and teeth and bleach hair. The Mundari also drink it in the belief that the cow urine infuses purity. They also combine urine with ashes to polish the magnificent horns of the cattle. At night, music played on the horns floats through the camp. People sing close to the heat of fires until they fall asleep under the stars with the cattle just a few feet away. Sleep is not always easy and the herders must often protect their livestock from jackals, hyenas and even African wild dogs. The main threat to livestock, however, is from raiders. Indeed, cattle rustling is a common cultural practice among many pastoral communities in East Africa. The Noa, Dinka and Moli often participate in cyclical raiding. The Mundari way of life faces an uncertain future. We believe, however, it will take some years for their traditions to change. They remain the basis for the whole social structure of the tribe, despite cell phones and a few other modern conveniences. Cattle and not cash remains the foundation of the society. If you enjoyed this video, kindly like, comment and share. Thanks for watching.